Hello, my friends. I now invite you to enjoy this classic Dr. Groovy lesson. Hey, folks. Scott Grove here with another request for some lessons. Um, I had requested to do an entire Chuck Berry series. Will I get around to it? Uh, probably at some point. It is very low on my to-do list, even though that has been requested for about five years. Why is it low? Because you can go anywhere on YouTube, and anybody and their dog, especially from home like I do these, um, teaches this kind of thing. Okay, So everybody will give it to you. Uh, Marty Schwartz, he always does a great job you know, at it, so you can always get great stuff from Marty. If you want the... Uh, pinnacle other than Chuck coming to your house and teaching you how to play it, um, the absolute 100 foremost guy to just go buy his video of um, is Steve Travato. I've been, you know, ripping him off for decades and decades, so Steve Travato, T-R-A-V-A-T-O. Um, he studies this stuff inside out and knows it as good as Chuck. So there's lots of good free ones, and I'm going to do uh, my variations of them also, and like I said, Marty's are very good. Um, so grab everybody, support everybody, everybody teach each other, and it's just music, man, share it. So anyway, today, um, since I personally don't have or believe that I will ever have any uh, hollow body guitars, other than acoustic guitars, um, I'll do the semi hollow body things like this, but I'm just not into the other things. Um, what we have here, just since I like to tell quick histories, this is the uh, Fender TC90, uh, which from 2004 through 2007 uh, remained just in the antique white and a dark cherry, uh, actually a dark black cherry sunburst. Okay, so in 2007 these became different, you know, with the four knobs and uh, the switch and everything, you know, just uh, switched them up. But they did like 700 of these in this color, 700 in the black cherry. And so from 2004 through 2007, over there in Korea, it says it somewhere on the guitar, maybe back here. Um, again, superb, superb guitars. But then they changed it to the JA90 in 2007 after they added two more knobs. And it became the Jim Atkins from uh, Jimmy Eat My Sister, I mean Jimmy Eat World um, <laughs> signature model. So. Um, so if you think that's what it was, you're close. So it is the TC90 right here. What TC stands for? Telecaster. Okay, and then it became the JA90 with the Jim Mackins thing. So this is my only thing. So you got a um, ash body, semi-hollow, just uh, hollow enough right here just to do this. The body is not actually hollow. It's just hollow enough to get the F-hole, make it look like that and it becomes extremely solid within uh, about half an inch inside there. Okay? Then everything else is just solid ash. It's a set neck. It is not neck through, and it's a maple neck. Okay? So, let's get down here, get ready to do some... What the chuck is that? That's right. I have to come up with something dirty for everything. Why? Because I'm Scott. Okay. So what we're going to do is what everybody that seems to do is cram everything in the key of A. And why is that so damn um, sacrilegious? Because when you get to the typical Johnny B. Good, which is of course what I'm going to kind of concentrate or loosely base everything on. Talk about my sister again. Uh, loosely. Um, sorry, Robin. Didn't mean that. <laughs> She's going to kick my ass someday if I get back home to Indiana. And... Um, because uh, Chuck Berry did not play Johnny B. Good in the key of A. It was in B flat. And no, people back in the day, they did not use capos. Or for you overseas, the capo. No, so those were not used. Um, people just flip and played in B flat. Why? Because that's where they sang it, so they played it there. So it was up here in B flat. <laughs> Okay, so if you played in B flat, you played in B flat. But of course, we're going to do it in A just to make it easy. Um, why am I going to make it easy? Because right now, I believe that uh, students of guitar should be just that students learning the easy stuff. Once you get past the easy stuff, I firmly believe in the uh, mama bird kicking the ass of the baby bird and booting it out of the tree right onto the ground and make it, you know, bump its butt a few times and let it go off and fly on its own. I think 
that I want, well, I know, but I think that all guitar teachers should kick their damn students out the door at a certain point and make them just go learn on their own because that's where you're going to learn the most is when you're out there, you know, you don't have to put your needle back on your record player like we used to have to do back in the day, but um, you're going to learn more on your own after you get a uh, head full of licks, you know, free here on YouTube. You guys got it pretty easy these days. You know, of course, we all walk back and forth uphill in the snow to and from school 300 miles each way uh, every day. But um, you will learn more and retain more if you figure it out on your own. Okay, so that being said, I'll shut up and show you how to play the easy stuff. And I recommend you try to learn something on your own um, every now and then. It will be so more, so much more rewarding than this. Okay, so for about an hour, I guess we'll sit here and kind of do this. Um, some of my lessons are short, some are long. I actually don't know how long it'll be, so it'll be about an hour, because that's as long as, yes, I still use cameras that have tape in them. Why? Because I have my good digital cameras here, and I just flat out don't like it. You know, here's a nice uh, little small high high def camera, and I don't like it. <laughs> I just love this old analog tape stuff. Okay, so I'm a geezer, and I'll shut up and I'll play like one. Okay, so let's get some good old Chuck Berry stuff. Okay, in the key of A, and just as Marty does, I'm going to show you the A minor pentatonic scale. Um, very easy if you don't know it. And uh, he actually shows this right at the beginning of his also. So it, it must be true if Marty says it's true. And you can pretty much take out to the bank. The guy's a great teacher. Okay, so we're going up to A on your high E string. Okay, up to the fifth fret. Now what we're going to do is strictly the A minor pentatonic and that is just going up to the 7th fret I'm sorry, the 8th fret Kick me Marty Okay, 8th fret Back to 5th 8th fret and 5th fret on the B Now 7, 5 on G Then you finally stop on the 7 on the D string that gives you your A So. You want to carry it on down? That is 7 5 on the D string, 7 5 on the A, then 8 5 on that low E. So the whole thing. Okay, and also as pointed out by Marty, yes, I watched a few peoples before I started doing this just to make sure I didn't leave much of anything out because I planned on going over five minutes. So, I want to make sure there's plenty of material here for y'all. So, I did my homework. <laughs> and like I said, you know, you grab what you have to from other people. And my memory is less than perfect. Um, because I'm a victim of uh, the 60s. Uh, yeah, I was born in the 60s. But then again, I was conceived in the 60s when the parents were doing a lot of drugs. So, therefore, my head screwed up via proxy. It's a contact high. Okay? <laughs> No, no, that's what's wrong with me. The uh, crack baby. No, they didn't have crack back then. Okay. Uh, the other things that are also pointed out, again, via Marty, are just the strict, simple, little two notes that are added into the minor pentatonic scale. So you have eight, seven, five. Same thing on B. Eight, seven, five. Then all the rest of the thing. Okay. same thing here. Um, if you want to scoot up to the A, you can do that, which is on the A, which is 7th fret on your D7, so you go 10, 9, 7 in order to get your minor harmonic, or your minor pentatonic, I'm sorry. Then 10, 9, 7 on your A, and then um, 8, seven, five on your low E string. Okay, so the first one or you can go Okay, these 
these are for filling in your um, licks. Of course, we'll get to the typical and all the stuff here in just a second. But just with a backing track, just so you can see how you can noodle around within everything. Um, say for playing. Now you do this stuff. It just shows you that you can noodle around using that A minor pentatonic scale. Okay, so beyond that, let's get some fun. We have to get in the different variations that everybody has bastardized over the years of the beginning to Johnny Be Good and what was basically the whole root of rock and roll back then uh, was Chuck's style of playing. And everybody copied Chuck. Why? Because he knew what the Chuck he was doing. Um, and via Steve Trovato, um, I'll show you the real way that um, Chuck actually played, which a lot of people probably don't know, but then again, I didn't know either until I, you know, checked out his version of um, what he does. And why I know it's correct is because that guy sits around and studies people. I mean, literally sits in front of the camera and studies each and every lick they've played for months and months and months. And then films this stuff over weeks and weeks and weeks to get everything exactly the way it was actually done instead of cheap ass variations like mine will be today but then again this is to not impress or depress anybody with uh, how accurate it is this is just to get you that vibe and because nobody wants to go off and be a Chuck Berry impersonator I hope not but you have to have the licks you know there you're gonna you're gonna play this song the rest of your life everybody does so you might as well have it close but then again throw in as much of your own flavor as you can I mean everybody out there after they get done you know they you know whatever they want to do um, so you get the major licks or the minor pentatonic licks as it might be okay so to get the first wrong version of this um, let's do this these are going to be called double stops that we are injecting here for those of you who already know what the hell this is you can speed the tape up or I can speed the tape up you can speed up your uh, YouTube I <laughs> just click the taskbar down at the bottom and speed ahead okay so just that simple little intro okay that's not the real intro but that's what most people use okay and that is using on the seventh fret of the D string, fifth fret on the G, seventh on the G, okay. Okay, our double stop, meaning nothing more than two strings played at the same time, we are covering, okay, the E covering up the E and the B string, going from the fourth fret, okay sliding it up from the fourth to the fifth you're getting five total notes one two you're not picking it the second time one three four five one two okay so hell there might be six there let's count them one two three four five six there is six uh, i never watched sesame street so i can't count so Okay, so after, so you've hit it actually five times once you land on home base. How's that? I'll pretend like I meant to say that. Okay, let's put in the full double stops. Okay, those are just simply flatten out your finger, your ring finger on the seventh fret on the B and G string. Same thing with your first finger on the 5th fret. A lot of people would just go to the open A string and the 7th fret on the A, or 7th fret on the D string, which is another A. Okay. Or, 
depending on what they want. Some people actually throw in the third, which is kind of eh, iffy, but listen to it with the third, meaning when you have that finger down on the A note, 7th fret D string, adding in with your middle finger on the 6th fret of the G string. Okay, so you'd end up with... Okay, so you can or can't do that. Whatever you want. It doesn't matter. It's all just suggestions. Okay? Okay, so this is a bunch of repetition stuff, but that's what it was all about. Okay, so let's get kind of what's going on there. I'm just going to stop on the one A note. Okay, so that is one way of doing it. Listen again and just simply follow along. I don't have to count all these out for you. Some people will do that. Actually grab all three strings, starting from your G string at the 7th fret, but still keeping the 5th frets covered on your E and B. And bending the G string only up a whole step, meaning two frets. So up to the E note, which is also fretted here already. So you'll know when it's in tune when it becomes the same as what's going on on your B string. Okay, then you do what is called a staccato note. So you cut off the note. How am I cutting them off? Muting with this part of your hand back here by the bridge. Just touches your strings. we're going to get to all that. Okay, so that is the basic um, first intro I'm going to show you. get into that also but this does not matter what chords are going on underneath you even though the band will be playing in A and D back to A up to E um, I will show you with this that I can stay strictly in that A thing and not have to change that's what's the beauty about this kind of music okay. see that there you don't have to go chord chasing the best thing to do is be monotonous be everything and be flat if you want to be right but we're back to a okay <laughs> oh god I slay me okay so um, again use variations <laughs> you know, keep sliding up do as much of that as you want Some people do it that way. Okay, so that's just sliding up a whole bunch of times. And then they do the same thing I showed you earlier if you want to add the third. So the A here on the ninth on the ninth fret, I'm sorry, seventh fret on your D string. And then adding in the third, the third of the chord, not the third fret. This is actually the sixth fret, but the third of your scale. One, two, three. Okay, so you got... Then, okay, 
and then back up. Okay, I'm going to skip all over the place because these are just parts. You put the parts together to make whatever the hell intro you want and whatever solos you want. The other little thing I just showed you, or the that you heard, okay, that is simply going to the eighth fret on the high E, ring finger, and the seventh fret of the B, while you still have your fifth fret on both of them with one finger. So you have the double stop, meaning two notes. Bend it up. So hit it once. Bend it up. Let it come back down. That's the only time you've hit it one time. And then back to your fifth fret double stop. Okay, that one, seventh fret, which we did before, covering just seventh fret B and G string. Bend it towards the floor. Both of them. Now we're bending towards the floor on the fifth fret. Same thing, double stops. What happens is your G string bends farther than your B string does, so it actually pulls in tune to that third. Okay, so your B string barely bends, but your G string bends a whole lot more. So it does a pseudo in tune, in -tune sounding thing. Okay, so as much of this as you want to do, or as little of it, the more monotonous, the more, uh, the more better it be. Okay, so do as much of this or as little of each one as you want. It doesn't make any difference. I'm not giving you uh, any one particular way. I'm giving you all the ways. Okay, what was I doing there to go to the E finally? The same thing I was doing making the A. Just put it all up one string. And then back to A. Okay, so those are a few different ways. Um, there are others, but let's take it from the beginning. Um, I lost track, of course, earlier, so they count it kind of funky. Five, six, seven. way to do it. If you want to change it up, change it up. <laughs> okay, here's barely changing it up. One, two, three. Why? Because they are all right. You can play whatever you want. And then, in addition, if you keep playing around with that, when it comes time for the second time that the whole song starts over, or you call it the guitar break, um, it does it four or five times in this particular song, or any given song that is a 12-bar blues like this, then you go back to that A minor pentatonic scale. <laughs> put that stuff into with it. So I'll do A intro, or an intro. I oh, gotta hate getting my English screwed up. Uh, enough of that's going on in this country. So I will try to get my intros right. So anytime, folks, that you are using a word that starts with a vowel preceding it, and you use the word A, you automatically add an N to it. So you would say, uh, you would add an A chord to it, or add an E chord to it, but you would not add an cheese to it, okay? If it begins with a consonant, you leave it as the word A, okay? <laughs> so learn your English, people.
Okay? <laughs> okay, so I'm going to do the double stops, the, the bends, and now throw in the A minor pentatonic scales around it just for uh, demonstration purposes. Okay, just to show you how they fit. One, two, three. Okay, so there you get a little bit cooler. Figaro, Figaro, alfalfa from, uh, if you guys remember the Little Rascals or our, our gang. Figaro, Figaro. Okay, so that applies also. So you get to mix them all together. Okay, let's do some other fun things. Again, there, there is no, no structure to this lesson at all. This is a freebie. So I make it up on the fly. White guy. I'm too fly for a white guy. Anyway, um, another cool thing to do is this, um, A7, okay, which normally, um, well, I won't even say normally, I'll just show you the damn thing. Um, let's go up and grab the E note or the ninth fret on your G string. Your normal A would be at the 10th fret of the B string, correct? Okay, now we need the 7th of that, okay? Not the major 7th, but all the way back to the flatted 7th. Um, the best way to play this is going to be with your ring finger up there on that 9th fret, and then your middle finger on the 8th fret on the B string. Okay, so you're sliding up into it. Okay, this is a cool thing. Uh, what makes this cool? Because it is damn cool. Okay, so you get the... If you want to change it around, use your middle finger and your first finger. I don't care. If you do it that way, you can add the A note to it. What? Okay, that's just chromatically, which means one fret at a time, going down. Okay, so that's just going. <laughs> okay, so that gives you, you know, your humorous sounding thing, so, like somebody laughing. That is that thing. Yeah, that's that thing I showed you earlier on seven and six. Okay, so you get. Okay, so that's one of those things. Or you can finish it up if you are using your middle finger and your first finger by taking, not putting that on the A, but actually putting it on the D flat or C sharp, which is the ninth fret on your high E string. But then if you finish it out, you have to change it up and get on the root note. Fifth fret. Okay, so if you're doing that whole thing. Again, for the slow learners, <laughs> the people down the short bus. Okay, so it's a cool way to do things. Okay, so you can see how you can use it be monotonous, kind of like my voice, where it's kind of like Fran Drescher and it all gets up in your 
crawl and just drives you nuts sometimes, try being me for a day. I know you don't want that. I don't wish it upon anybody. Uh, drink it if you got it, folks. Iced tea time. Okay. So grab those. Those are just more variations of the same type of licks that were used back then. Now here is a fact. The whole was not used on Johnny Be Good um, by Chuck Berry. You're like saying, ah! You're like, nigga, please. No, it was not. And um, what was actually used, you can watch any video, is the same thing. All the bends are down. Even the When you play it fast, it don't look like anything, but it does not go. It does not bend up. Chuck <laughs> does not up Chuck. <laughs> Chuck goes down. I know, strange for a black guy. Ooh, I'm going to get letters for that. Black guys don't go down. Okay, so send your emails to, uh, <laughs> let's give them to Marty Schwartz. Why not? <laughs> sorry, sorry, Marty. Okay, anyway, so if you want to be correct, for whatever reason, but there is a reason because there is a different sound there, okay? Because when you're doing this, you get that sound, but when you do, it's a different sound instead of, okay? Let me get my fingers to work and that's one way. is the actual way that Chuck plays, okay? So while we and Ace Frehley and everybody who has capitalized on this kind of playing, Angus Young, um, that's the way it's really, truly, originally played by Chuck, is... <laughs> have to get rid of your first finger to do that? No. You can throw whatever works for you. But just to know, for history's sake, that it was actually that all the bends were down. People started bending upward later. Okay? It became cool to... Stuff, you know, much later. But the bends were all done down towards the floor. These people back then, all they had were wound... G strings, so it was hard to bend. You know, there weren't real light guitar strings back then. So that's why you'll see when a lot of the bridges back then had fixed bridges on them that they were uh, the G string instead of it being the saddles being back here, um, they were fixed bridges and they would actually be going back, and then all of a sudden the G string would be way up here. And that's because a wound string on a G string would have to actually to be intonated correctly would actually have to be way up this way instead of three down like a staircase and three down again like we're used to. Okay, so if you ever see the old guitars that have the stop tailpiece, just a wraparound bridge, it looks like this, strings go around it and it has the built-in saddles. That's why the G string is way up here and if you do not put a wound G string on there, your guitar will not be able to play in tune, period. Okay, so remember that when you're buying vintage guitars and you look at some of the old ones with especially like the wooden bridges and so forth that's why they are the way they are you'll see Takamini acoustics a lot of the time with the electron you know the a piezo pickup in them they have one part of the uh, bone <coughs> bone <laughs> um, this guitar shows that the Martin is incorrect I know I'm taking away from the lesson so it's free um, so these are incorrect and don't do you much good. Yeah, so you spend a few thousand on a guitar that don't work with the shit, but hey, that's Martin for you. But anyway, um, Takamini, uh, their pickups would be two pickups in there. They actually slanted the E and B going back like it should be, but then the next four would be on a totally separate um, saddle here. 
and allow the G string to be at the foremost front of that slant because they understood that acoustic strings, um, the G would be wound. Okay? So just for a lot of you guys out there playing 335s and um, any kind of Gibson ES model or any hollow body guitar thing, that's what's going on if you're trying to use strings that are unwound for your G string. And that's why it sounds out of tune, because they were meant to have a wound string on there. Okay, so in case you just wondered, uh, that's, that's a little fact for you. Um, so there are replacement bridges to uh, put on there for now if you want to use regular strings and then keep the original, of course, to keep all the value of your guitar there and you know keep it in the guitar's case for later when you do by chance happen to sell your guitar. So if you want to use regular strings, get the replacement um, bridge saddles for it that will handle the strings that are easier to bend, the lighter gauge strings. Okay, so enough of that. So we were up here. Okay, how do we utilize that? Um, the A7. You can do it however you want. double stops so I was hitting the G string while we were back here yeah, after you've already made the slide then hit the B string then adding the A note then we go to D back to A now when we go to E Got to move the A note back, so now we actually have like an E right here, and then D, A, then E. Okay, now another little thing, um, a la Marty Schwartz again, that he will show you on his five minute clip um, will be just the regular staccato A notes, okay, which will be your fifth fret again, high E string, okay. He likes to use his pinky, I use my ring finger, you guys use whatever fingers make her feel good. Okay, and that is simply going from the A note here, all the way up to the A note on the B string, which is your 10th fret on your B string. Okay, so it's the same note. Okay, it's best to start from back here at the 8th fret, slide to the 10th. Okay, so that's all you're doing. And when you do it fast. Okay, so you'll hear that a lot of time on Chuck's stuff too. Okay, so that's one of those. And um, where else can we go? Oh yeah. Okay, that there is one that a lot of people miss. Um, Chuck did this one a lot. Show you it in context so you kind of hear it. Okay, so it doesn't matter whether you're using it over top of E 
or A or all the way through. Again, it's one of those monotonous licks that you can get away with and everything. Generally, Chuck used it over the E, but as you could hear there, you can play it everywhere, here, there, and everywhere. Um, this is done by the high E string at the 12th fret, making it an E, making it an E. Okay. So you're going to do 12th fret, E, 13th fret, B, as it's ringing. So you're only bending up half a step. This one was actually bent upward. You bend it down, you're going to crash into your E string. And then you can end up finally on the A, which is just at the 14th fret, on your G string. Okay, when you're playing E, that's your cool sound there. Okay, otherwise you have to be. Okay, so that makes a, a E6 by doing that, which is, of course, musically correct. But having it here is no good. You have to bend it up somewhere. Gives you that old 50s. Well, actually, by the time you got to sixth chords, it became kind of 60s. Okay, so that's just a whole other thing. If you want to do that, just because we're here, make an F looking chord, but make an Fing chord, play an E for now, add your pinky all the way up here, that's right, just to the 14th fret, for that same note, um, on the B string, play one note, go back, next note, next note, next note, okay, so, but try to let them all ring. Cool stuff. Free lesson. Okay. Anyway, so that is the other cool thing. And I'll show you here where uh, they would normally put it in just over the E. cool and everybody should know it and you should get this on your own um, this is playing 757 as a pull off hammer on on your D string pull off hammered on and then we're bending towards the floor again just the fifth fret on your G and B strings so you're trying to get that but do it so quick that you don't hear it Okay, was this used by Chuck? No. This is just that kind of thing though that can sound really cool and bring it up to um, Brian Setzer's time uh, from the Stray Cats and from the Brian Setzer Orchestra coming to a theater near you. Pee Wee Herman coming in a theater near you. Okay, old joke. Uh, have you heard about Pee Wee Herman's new dry cleaning service? It's a really nice place. You ought to go there sometime and drop your pants and jacket off. That's right. Okay. Ba -dum -ba. Where's my rim job? I mean my rim shot. Come on. Uh, Doc Severinsen, everybody back there in the band. Come on. Tommy Newsom. Okay. We need Buddy Rich on the drums. He'll give me a rim job. Oh, wait. He's dead. Never mind. Anyway, so. What the hell do they keep putting in my tea that makes me talk the way I do? I don't know. Now, that's one thing Marty wouldn't do. 
talk like me. Again, though, if you, for some reason, have uh, been hiding under a rock, go check out Marty's lessons. Man, he's got a buttload of free stuff. Marty Schwartz. Um, tons of free stuff on eBay. Always has, always will. Good-hearted guy, good, clean guy uh, to listen to. He won't ever cuss at you, you know, like I fucking would. Um, so, he's uh, good for all ages. So, here we keep going with this. So, that is just another um, bit of information to stick in there. <laughs> And what I did was added in the seventh fret two up to the eighth fret. Okay, that's another good one. Cover all three strings. Cover all three strings. Hit the B and E. Now hit the G and B. Then the E and B. Okay, so it makes sense. Okay, so you've seen how that. Give that thing some wiggle, man. Make her giggle. <laughs> Okay, and now the other fun elements here that we can also use. Um, are the um, simple simultaneous bends. Simple Simon says, okay, um, these were not used by Chuck, but they are very handy for the good of the whole. Uh, here I go, yep. Uh, as long as it's for the good of the whole, you better be doing it. <laughs> Uh, until you get married, then you can quit, just like she quits doing everything she did to you. Okay, um, <laughs> shit, I need a new job. Uh, <laughs> or maybe I need a job doing comedy. I'm telling you, <laughs> I get all, all six people a week in my club. Okay, these are the simple, um, okay, no, but the same minor pentatonic scale going up, but doing that's right, we're heading to a different um, decade because we're bending up. Okay, so 5th fret and 8th fret on the B string. Bend up the B string till it is in unison, meaning exactly the same note as your uh, A note. And since we do, that's what you're going to do with your first finger. And guess what? These fingers follow along with it. Okay, and these, in the context of a 50 style song, will get you the reaction that Michael J. Fox got during the prom scene of Back to the Future 1. Okay, when he finally if he kicks the amp over his feet and back, and oh, your, your kids are going to love it. <laughs> but it's great in these kind of songs, and I will demonstrate uh, if you don't overdo it and make it sound uh, too Ingve Malmsteen on them. So, the same. Uh, minor pentatonic scale. Okay. All the way up. So, five, seven, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, and seventeen. Okay. And it just adds fun to the top. And we're out. Okay, let's let the band do their thing around one time.
clean as I would like it to be, of course. Okay, so back in the 50s they were developing, you would have heard it on um, uh, Rock Around the Clock, Bill Haley. Um, watch, watch Happy Days and... Okay, so just a bunch of the what's called butterfly picking. Okay. I can't get both my hands to operate together right now, but that's okay. You see what I'm talking about. But that was big back then. Just a slight tube style overdrive on your amp like I got here. And do the uh, typical scale. You can throw it a lot more of a uh, chromatic stuff. make it go by really fast. Okay, so you slop it in and it sounds cool. So basically those are our um, different variations of the Chuck stuff that I am going to throw at you for today for free, of course. And you can always go to my uh, website, which is listed in the link directly below this video and pick up tons of free lessons. All you got to do is simply go to the site. On the left hand side there's a whole menu of the lessons you can buy or just go to a place that says um, flea, flea? Yeah, we'll, we'll, do, we'll do some flea stuff. Uh, <laughs> selling the seeds of cheese, let's do that. Okay, anyway, uh, free lesson clips uh, over there on the left hand side, halfway down the menu. Of course all the paid stuff is first, but um, where it says free lesson clips go there there are hour long videos there are five minute long videos there are videos for every instrument on there so there's tons you can spend a few days in there and not you know get them all okay so there's plenty of stuff there so um, once again Scott Grove I'll just call it a day because it's night <laughs> and once again um, the cool uh, love this thing um, even though I'm not a huge fan of the Seymour Duncans um, they actually sound pretty decent in the uh, TC90, which is this version, which I like um, quite a bit actually. It's a great blues guitar. And once again, this is Fender via um, Korea, which is my second favorite uh, Fender place other than Japan. So it goes like Fender Japan, Fender Korea, then Fender USA, then on down the food chain. Uh, USA right now is pretty comparable to Mexico. Uh, they're well, a couple miles apart anyway, so they're the same flipping place, but you pay the extra money because you do. <laughs> uh, you pay it for that little decal that says made in USA instead of made in Mexico. Um, anyway, so check out the guitars too, and if you can find them, there's a couple that pop on eBay now that there are not the JA90 version. So again, 2004 through 2007, the Fender TC Telecaster 90, which is one volume, one tone, and that's it. And then the uh, different versions of the Duncan P90s in there. Very cool guitar. I wish I could have more time to actually play guitar. But And also again, check out Marty and all the other guys who offer free lessons all over YouTube and many other sites. Um, a lot of us do this for a living. I do this for a living now. Um, as a lot of you know, I you know played the road thing, was on a tour bus for 25 years and did that. And for uh, since I was 13 years old, playing you know five, six nights a week in nightclubs um, throughout my entire high school. And then after you finally have your career, your career is done, then what else can you do? You sit around and teach, man. You know, it's like it's the only way you can still enjoy things. I, I really don't want to get out and play anymore. It's, um, I don't play well with others anymore. <laughs> I, I don't take bullshit from anybody, so it's better if I do not personally interact with other band members and their uh, 
hang-ups too. I've got enough hang-ups on my own. So when you get a whole bunch of people in a band, you've seen VH1 behind the music, you know, shit happens and uh, you all kill each other and unless the plane crashes first, okay? So anyway, I'll shut up. <laughs> so anyway, thanks to, again, Marty and everybody else who teaches online. Um, it's a big community. There's enough internet for everybody. So check out all the other people. Don't just hang with me. I'm here. This is a small part of what's available to you. And as I said earlier in the video, please go grab um, as much mm, beginner stuff and in intermediate stuff as you can. But at some point, wean yourself off the tip. Okay? I know nobody wants to give up a tip. But, you know, it goes dry eventually. And uh, you will get a lot more out of learning things on your own because you'll have enough crap in your library and in your head to be able to hear what's going on and it will be much more rewarding to you okay so uh keep chucking up your stuff and up chucking your licks and <laughs> i'm the chuck out of here take care bye